Now the ayah of dua. Subhanallah, every word of this ayah. We begin with the word idha. Idha is trans. What idha? Sa'alaka ibadi, right? So it begins with idha. Idha means in English when. When. There's a difference in English and in Arabic between when and if. I want you to understand the difference between when and if. Bil Arabiya naqul in. In. Walam yaqul subhanahu wa ta'ala wa in sa'alaka ibadi anni qal wa idha sa'alaka ibadi anni. So what's the difference between if and when? Let me tell you a story. There's a mother. She sent her, her son joined the army. And he went to war. Now she's missing her son. And she doesn't hear back from him. No calls coming, no emails coming, nothing. He's at war. When you talk to her about her son, does she say, when my son comes back, I will be very happy? Or does she say, if my son comes back, I will be very happy? Which one does she say? She says, when my son comes back, I'll be very happy. She does not say what? If my son comes back, I'll be very happy. Because if she says, if my son comes back, then she has accepted that he will die. If she says when, then she's expecting him to come home. You understand? When you lose someone, and you really want them to come back, and your heart cannot accept that they won't come back, you don't say if, you say when. Allah says, when my slave asks you. He does not say, if my slaves ask you. Why? Because he's not saying, oh, maybe they won't ask. Allah is expecting you to ask. He's waiting for you to ask. It's not just a possibility. It's like Allah is saying, when are you going to ask? Subhanallah, idha. It's a, there's a tawakkur, there's an expectation, there's a talab, there's a love inside the word idha. If Allah was talking about people, He didn't care about them. Whether they ask or not, who cares? He would have said, in sa'ala. He said, idha sa'ala. Then there's sa'ala itself, sa'ala fi'il madi. You can say, idha yas'alu also. Idha yutla alayhim. Idha comes with mudari', idha comes with madi. Idha comes with the present tense and it comes with the past tense. When it comes with the present tense, it means over and over again. Meaning, if my slaves ask you over and over again, that would have been, إِذَا يَسْأَلْكَ إِذَا يَسْأَلُكَ عِبَادِي But the ayah says, إِذَا سَأَلَكَ سَأَلَ is the past tense. The past tense, يُشِيرْ إِلَى الْمَرَّةِ الْمَرَّةِ الْوَاحِدَةِ is one time, something that happens one time. Meaning, I'm waiting for my slave, if they, they can only ask about me how many times? Once, I'm not even waiting for a lot of times, I'm expecting just one time ask. Then he says, سَأَلَكَ they ask you, Yani Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah is waiting, some sahabi says, that I want to know more about Allah. Who is he going to go ask? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ibadi. And then he didn't say, Sa'alaka ha'ula, these people. Sa'alaka alladhina amanu, those who believe. Sa'alaka al-mu'minun, the believers. Sa'alaka al-muslimun, ashabuk, none of these. He said, Sa'alaka, idha sa'alaka ibadi. My slaves, my slaves. And he didn't even say ibaduna or ibadallah. He said ibadi. The e at the end of that means I, my slaves. Allah uses my in the Quran, my. You know, sometimes Allah uses he, sometimes he uses we, sometimes he uses I, right? You know that, right? When does he use I? He only uses I when he has a lot of love or a lot of anger. There's only two times. If you read an ayah of the Quran, it has I in it. It's either Allah showing a lot of love or He is showing a lot of anger. There's only those two. There's no normal situation. This is an ayah of a lot of love. So He says, Ibadi, not Ibaduna. My slaves, they're mine. You know, even when, you, when someone is distant from you, but they're yours. My brother, my sister, my mother, my father. There's an, it's, not, it's not just you own them, you love them. When you say my to someone, it's an expression of love. And they're ibad. Now these people may not be worshipping Allah, but He still calls them ibad. Now, who do they ask? Let me ask you if you were paying attention. The people who ask about Allah, do they ask Allah or do they ask the Prophet? They ask the Prophet. They ask the Prophet ﷺ. So what you expect is, now here I'll say the English. If they ask you about me, then tell them, I'm near. But the ayah does not say tell them. Ayah does not say, tell them. Here's what the ayah says. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ When they ask you about me, then I am near. Then I am near. What is missing? Then tell them. Ayah. فَقُلْ لَهُمْ إِنِّي قَرِيبٌ 
There's no faqul lahum. There's no tell them. Why not? The people came to ask the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Somebody comes to ask the alim about Allah. Will Allah answer my dua? I have a lot of mistakes. I missed a lot of salat. Will Allah still answer my dua? Will Allah, will Allah put me in hellfire? He's asking the alim. In this case, he's asking Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And Allah says, he puts the Rasul aside and he answers him directly. He starts talking to you and talking to me. He's not talking to Rasulullah anymore. He says, فَإِنِّي قَرِيب I am near. I'm so near, I'll talk to you. I won't even tell the messenger to talk to you. I'll talk to you myself. That's the beauty of Quran. People came and asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah did not tell him, you go tell them. Allah said, no, no, I'll tell them myself. I am so near. You don't believe me? Why, and why did I say you don't believe me? He said, inni. Inna is used in Arabic, li izalat al-shak. You know, al-mukhatib mutaraddid, lahu raib. So if someone is in doubt, then you use inna. Allah is saying, don't you ever doubt that I am near. Why are you doubting that I am near? Why do you think I would go away from you? You turn your back on me, I don't turn my back on you. You turned your back on me. You disobeyed me. You stop loving me. I never stop loving you. You become distant. I stay near. And the word qareeb also. Qareeb is ism sifa, which means I'm always near. The sentence actually means, certainly I am always near. Let my slaves know. Now, the other thing is, how many names does Allah have? At least 99. At least 99. So many beautiful names of Allah. And the one, when Allah, and, some, and the messenger is told, when people ask you about me, when they ask the Prophet about Allah, then the most important thing you need to tell them is which name of Allah, or which description, that He is what? Near. That he is near. Why? Because when he is near, it's easier for you to talk to him. When, you, when someone is far, you can't talk to them. When someone is near, you can talk to them. When someone is near, you can respect them. So if you're in school, and the teacher walks out of the classroom, the teacher walks out of the classroom, do you behave the same way or no? No. And don't lie, you're in the masjid, okay? Go outside and lie. Hey, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> when the teacher is near, do you behave differently? You do, don't you? Now you're taking a test. The teacher walks by. He just walks by. Do you cover your exam a little more? You know? Just his shadow makes you like, oh, 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 oh my God. Especially if he puts his hand on your desk and he looks down at your paper and he goes, hmm. Oh, maut. I do that to my students because I really enjoy torturing them psychologically. <laughs> this is one of the great joys of teaching. You get to mess with students. Oh my God. Allah says, if my slaves ask you about me, tell them I am what? Near. When you know someone is near, you act differently. Because he's always near. فَإِنِّي Now, if he's so near, then what does he say? Ujibu. Ujibu. Ujibu in Arabic means to, ajaba means to respond, to give an answer. But there's another word in Arabic, which is istajaba. كَمَا يَقُولُ الْقُرْآنِ فِي مَوْضِعْ آخَرْ فَاسْتَجَابَ لَهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ فَاسْتَجَابَ لَهُمْ لَمْ يَقُلْ أَجَابَ لَهُمْ قَالْ فَاسْتَجَابَ لَهُمْ He said he responded to them, their master responded to them. So there are two words in Arabic, ajaba and istajaba. There's ajaba and istajaba. Now ajaba from if'al is actually immediate. When you answer somebody immediately without any delays, that is called ijaba. When you take time to answer, you don't answer right away, but you answer over time, that is called istijaba. Allah says, ujibu. He says, I respond when? Immediately. I respond immediately. Some people make dua and they say, when is Allah going to respond? When is the help of Allah coming? I'm sick, when is Allah going to make me better? I can't find a job, when is Allah give me a gonna give me a job? You know, I can't get married, when is Allah gonna get me married? My mother keeps turning all the rishtas down. When is Allah gonna change her heart? This one's nose is too long, this one's eyes are too far apart, this one is, you know, this one doesn't know how to make chai properly, I can't get married, my mother is killing everything. Ya Allah, when is my mother gonna, you make dua to Allah. Allah says, I will respond when? Immediately, and by the way, by the way, these are the ayat of Ramadan, yes? 
So if you really, really want immediate answers, when do you make dua? Ramadan, man. And if you really want Allah to be close, get close to Allah first, recite a lot of Qur'an and then make dua. Then recite Qur'an and make dua. Then recite Qur'an and make dua. That's what you should do in Ramadan. Oh man, you'll enjoy Ramadan. If you make lots of dua, you start enjoying Ramadan. If you don't make lots of dua, you won't enjoy Ramadan. The joy of Ramadan is in dua. So he says, Ujibu. I respond. Then he says, Da'wat da'i. Such powerful words. He says, I, by the way, I is used when? When did I say? I, is, I and we and he. When is I used? Too much love, too much anger. Which one is this? Too much love. I respond. I myself respond. Immediately respond. Now respond to who? You might think Allah responds to someone who makes a lot of dua. I only make dua like once in a year. When you have exams, Ya Allah, I have an exam. Ameen. And then you take the dua. <laughs> Allah, now if, you, if someone makes a lot of dua, you use the word dua. If someone makes dua one time, just one time, you call that da'watun. Da'wah with the tamar buta at the end. The tamar buta is it's used for mustar marra. It's used for the words in Arabic that happen one time. Allah says da'wat ad da'i. I respond to even the one call. The guy only made dua how many times? One time. Allah does not say to him, where were you all year? You never made any salah. You only make one dua to me your whole life? Forget you. You only remember me one time? You know, if you are an employee and you only show up to your job one time in the whole year, you don't have a job. Don't say, who are you? I work here. What? When? I got my job last year. What are you doing here? Well, you know, I, I, I was, uh, I don't know, but I'm here now at least. Can we start all over again? Is your boss going to say, yeah, sure. I'll, right away, sir, please. Why don't you get a promotion? <laughs> no. He's not going to offer you that. Allah is giving you, in the word da'wah, He's saying, I will even answer the person who never makes dua, only made dua one time. Even they should say, Ya Allah, He will answer. Don't say to yourself, man, I don't even have a beard. Allah is not going to answer my dua. I only have a mustache. Allah is going to, you know. I just watched like three movies before Ramadan because I figured I'm not going to watch in Ramadan. Now I'm going to make dua. Ya Allah will still answer your dua. Don't watch movies. But don't expect, never think Allah will not answer. Even the guy who makes one dua.